everyone to the Data Swamp. It's Justin uh, coming to you from Seattle, and I've got Wayne, our co-host, joining me, uh, coming to you from down in Florida. Hey, Wayne, how's it going? Ah, uh, doing well, doing well. Good day to you. How's everything in Seattle? It's it's rainy and pretty pretty gray, but <laughs> I'm Sounds thankful perfect. to be living up here. <laughs> Sounds Ab- perfect. Seattle weather. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'm sure you got just total sunshine so yeah yeah uh, the the unfortunate part of living in florida is uh dealing with a little bit of sun so uh not not too bad but uh there's there's storms are coming so uh it's not always good either so you, you take the good and, and and you work it all out but everything's good everything's good looking forward to the show today yeah man me too as you batten down the hatches so <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we're going to be talking today about the importance of dashboards, reporting, and apps, and it'll be a good de- dovetail, I think, off of our last topic, which was analyzing data for insight. There we were really able to talk about the process of gathering data and preparing it, making sure that it's ready for us to analyze, and then talking a little bit about how to communicate the, the analysis that we do on it as well as possible. Th- this time we're going to be talking about the importance of dashboards, reports, and apps, which is one way to visualize your data, uh, but it still goes along the exact same kind of line of thinking that I think you introduced to me, Wayne, which is you know, starting with data, turning that into information, turning that information into insights, and then those insights turn into decision, right? And that all comes... Uh, that all is with the goal of getting more value out of your data, correct? So, so, uh, and I, you know, I, I appreciate your perspective on this. You spent a lot of time building, uh, dashboards and apps as well, right? Yeah, it's come a long way. Um, the bottom line is this is probably what, what we would all consider the final product, right? It's sort of like, uh, you know, if you're going to produce anything, let's use a car as an example, Um, you're talking about the final output. When everything's all said and done, uh, you've got a vehicle you can drive, and and it brings value uh, to whatever you're doing, namely getting from point A to point B. And, uh, you know, hopefully if the car uh, has been built properly, it does the job of getting you from A to B, all right? And so data is very similar in that ultimately you try to uh, develop insights out of that data, right? And those insights then help you make good business decisions. So uh, this is a really um, high-profile topic because this is what everybody sees at the end. Nobody sees the data warehouse. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> sees the processes and the flows that go into it. But what they do see are the pretty beautiful dashboards and graphs and charts that are interactive, and you can do some analysis and really find out what the data story is, right? What what story is the data telling? And so uh, that's why it's very high profile. And I think uh, it's going to be a great topic to discuss um, in terms of data again. So let, let's always remember that, you know, that being the foundation and the root of things, um, it, it's important to always kind of relate back to all those beautiful graphs and charts actually having some meaning at the end of the day. Absolutely, Wayne. Well, you've got a you you our listeners got a wealth of information coming your way today. But before we get into all that, we're gonna have a quick word from our sponsor, Tesh Global. Uh, Tesh Global is a data management professional services firm with focused experience in the most challenging, ugly problems in modern data integration, enterprise analytics, and software development. We have extensive experience in the areas of enterprise integration enterprise business intelligence and analytics, and software application development in a variety of industries, including healthcare, manufacturing, supply chain, retail, insurance, and more. And Tesh Global is headquartered in Grafton, Wisconsin. It has offices in Boise, Idaho, Mexico City, Mexico, and Amsterdam, Netherlands. And for more information, you can visit www.teshglobal.com. And we thank them for being our sponsor. So let's go ahead and dive into this, Wayne. I think, uh, you know, to to open up the topic uh, more than we already did, you know, it really can be frustrating for people now in the information age 
uh, especially people in management, uh, for them to not have information at their fingertips, right? And uh, with departments uh, in, in many businesses kind of uh, coming under increasing scrutiny uh, and increasing pressure to deliver value, right? Um, the, the pressure really is real to, <laughs> to kind of <laughs> understand what you're doing. And uh, many people kind of face the challenge of, you know, pulling and manipulating data from a bunch of sources manually uh, in order to satisfy those demands, which can be really inefficient and uh, just, just tedious, right? And so dashboards have kind of been this key player in making some of that information all of a sudden available at your fingertips. Yeah, it's, it's a vital part to most businesses um, on a couple different tiers. Um, a lot of the data that's out there are really re- revolving around um, what you would call performance, right? Every business wants to be able to perform better uh, operationally, right? So in other words, if you want your business to produce more, uh, be more efficient in its production, and ultimately be more profitable, um, those are things that actually can be assisted or um, really helped through analyzing data. And so that's one aspect of it, right? The actual operational side. Um, the other side is reporting that, right? Everyone needs to tell a good story. I think it's a good idea to actually relay that information, the story of your data, to both your customers. Um, to regulators, uh, insurance companies uh, have regulators, government agencies uh, often regulate businesses for various reasons, um, and dashboards help with that. So I think this is why, if I were to really look at it, I would really say that you know dashboards have really become popular because of those outlets. You know, being able to be efficient and allow uh, workers within the company. Um, to actually do their jobs better, um, get better results. And then ultimately tell that story to any outside entity, whether it be the consumer, whether it be competitors even, uh, or even to uh, you know regulating industry uh, agents out there um, like the government or any other regulatory um, governing body, if you will, to kind of Show what you're doing. What does the business actually, um, you know, produce? How well do they produce um, their product and service? And so that's why dashboards are a really quick way of allowing folks to kind of peer in, pull back the covers back on some businesses and see the performance. So I think that's one of the things that as we look at this, I think we'll kind of get into those uh, different aspects of it. Sure. Yeah, it just makes me think uh, about, you know, all the different kinds of dashboards there are as well. You know, you're talking about um, being able to, you know, move faster, have more operational efficiency, right? And and really make better decisions through dashboards, right? And, uh, you know, there are these different, there, there are these different types of dashboards um, that, you know, we were, we were talking about earlier, um, there's operational dashboards, right, which are ones that you'll see used kind of every day, and maybe they're being updated by a real-time feed, and maybe they're sitting in some call center, right, so people can be tracking their stats on, on calls and stuff, and then there's other dashboards that are more analytical dashboards, right, that... Uh, that are for you know the, the the CEO or or a business analyst to be able to see a summary of what's going on and kind of co- consolidate and automate a whole bunch of different data points um, and be able to provide this uh, you know summary analysis of kind of what's going on in the business um, all all with the with the goal of better decision making right but um, um, and you know, you know, for, for the analytical dashboard use case versus the operational u- dashboard use case, you got very different users in play, right? So, w- would you just speak a little bit to kind of the different kinds of dashboards that can kind of be floating out there, and and where they live, and who they serve? 
Yeah, those, those are great distinctions because uh, the day-to-day -day operations is really um, the core of business. You know, what do they actually do? And those are the folks who um, actually get things done on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's very granular. So it's important for them to have, uh, as you alluded to, the, the real-time effect of data. You know, what's happening right now? And those are some things that, uh, you know, are, are always uh, needed by the folks who are boots on the ground, actually doing the day-to-day -day grind of business and making sure things are running efficiently. So those are, uh, you know, operational dashboards that allow to uh, they really allow the business to keep uh, functioning and functioning like a well-oiled machine. And uh, if you were to uh, take a step back and look at some of the analytical dashboards, um, those are dashboards that happen after the fact. Um, mm. So, for instance, um, even you as an individual, you, you may look at your banking and you want to know exactly how much money's in there today, right? <laughs> um, you're, you're probably not concerned with what was in there three years ago, right? Um, but if you were to look at it from an analytical perspective and you wanted to see, you know, do I have more money in there today than I do two years ago, three years ago? Um, those are things that are more analytical. So for a business, you might have um, what they call trending reports, right? You want to see the data over time, year over year, month over month. How did we do this quarter this year compared to uh, this quarter last year, this quarter for the last five years? So those are called uh, point in time uh, type of reports where you can actually look at the data at a point in time and compare it to another point in time. And these are very good reporting KPIs for a company to show the story. And that story is typically one that um, uh, is desired to be one of growth, right? <laughs> Folks always want to see, you know, we're doing better, we've made more sales, we've got more income, and therefore um, we're growing. Um, these are typically the types of measurements that an analytical type of dashboard can produce. And these are the dashboards or the actual results of those dashboards um, commonly handed over to regulatory agencies, commonly handed over to stakeholders, um, stockholders, things of that nature, so that they can actually see the story of the data, right? And so I, I think those are great distinctions, and you can start to kind of get the wheels turning in terms of each individual business. And if you're listening to this, you can kind of relate that to your business. These are things that are common uh, in terms of the principles where you've got daily operations and then you want to reflect on those daily operations. How did we do? Good, bad, or ugly? And so with that kind of paradigm, that kind of insight into your data, now you can start to see why things like predictive analytics are becoming so popular because you know, with the history of data and the large amounts of data um, that's being accumulated now, now you can kind of anticipate what's to come based on trends, based on patterns, based on uh, artificial intel uh, intelligence and machine learning, giving you some insights on what could possibly happen. And I think that's some of the exciting stuff that's happening um, with a lot of the dashboards that are uh, being produced currently and uh, the direction that the industry is going in as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I was just going back to thinking about when you were talking about the trend line aspect of dashboards, right? And really, uh, you know, dashboards are meant to provoke this response. They're meant to tell the story for sure, like you said. And then there's, there's this part where you uh, are also kind of, uh, part part of the dashboard is really a call to action, right? Um, so they're 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 sort of vital in this decision making process, and uh, you know whether it's it's real time stuff that's like I said going to a call center, um, or it's you know competitive analysis. Um, uh, you're really using them to identify items that require action, right? <laughs> and and kind of surface that out of the data that you wouldn't normally see, right? And uh, 
and maybe even streamline certain workflows, right? So, uh, so that what used to have to go into the process of deciding whether an action needed to be taken or not actually takes fewer steps because it's in a dashboard rather than in all these different places that you got to go to um, and kind of cross analyze against each other, right? So, could you talk about taking it maybe one step further from just the storytelling part of the dashboard to the decision making and the call to action parts of the dashboard? Um, absolutely. I think one of the great things about data is the uh, relatedness. Okay, so uh, it's very simple to look at a you know two dimensional uh, graph and you see you know year over year um, uh, different measurements. Let's just uh, look at a typical one: finance, right? Money. How much did we make this year compared to last year? And what you'll find is that it's very easy two-dimensionally, if, if you just look at two dimensions of, of data and say, oh, this year uh, we made more or less than last year. Um, but once you start to analyze that data and go in a little bit deeper, what happens is you may find out that uh, perhaps you made less money this year because the cost of your product or service actually escalated for you to provide. So this digs into uh, the profit, you know, uh, initially, but if uh, developed and, and, and actually nurtured properly and, you know, you, you take care of, of, of your business in such a way that uh, you anticipate um, these types of ebbs and flow of cost and um, availability in the market, what happens is you're able to now make those decisions for the next year. And now that you've spent, um, you know, getting certain resources, raw materials at a better cost, what happens is now you can actually start to provide uh, a more efficient product or service to your customer because you've related those costs to, let's say, for instance, a weather pattern, okay? Okay. There's times when natural resources coming from all over the world, um, they actually fluctuate in price. So someone making business decisions could simply look at the data and say, wow, we noticed that, let's say, in the wintertime, uh, November, December, uh, prices start to you know, go up for a particular raw material that you use. And so if you are able to see this in the trending of the data, you can order your materials a little earlier, right? Why not or order your materials sometime in June, July before the prices go up? And now you're able to use the stock, right, that you've got rather than buying consistently over uh, a year's time uh, at the same volume each month. So this is a, a very simple and, and, and uh, um, very black and white example of how allowing the data to give you insight into your purchasing power and ultimately into your profit. So these are some of the things that um, you'll see more and more uh, companies doing. And again, this is a, a simple example um, because all of these elements of the data are related. Pricing, geography, time, so when you start to add these factors and variables into your analysis, now you start to tell that story that can ultimately create the story. So that next year you can say, because we did X purchases at X time in X region, we're now able to get this result. So these are things that businesses are looking to get more value from as they start to collect more and more data. Mm -hmm. So very important to analyze the story as a whole, but really start to uh, dig under the covers and make the relationships between these patterns and data uh, come to life. So there's a there's a quick example, and I've I've got tons more, um, but I think that'll give you a little bit of insight into how we can actually glean some information from the data and then ultimately make some decisions. Definitely one one. Scenario I can actually think of from my own personal life. I was 
one of the guys who bought into some of the Bitcoin craze when it was going on. I had some Bitcoin and Ethereum and Litecoin all in a, in a, in a wallet over on Coinbase. And I remember just hawkishly monitoring that. Somehow I feel very lucky I got in right before the, the crazy price hike. And so I got to ride that all the way through. And then right around when it was coming down and I was just about to have uh, <laughs> it come down from uh tri- tripling my tripling my investment to just uh doubling my investment i decided to i decided to pull out and it's kind of only gone down since so it's just one example of you know there's no exact science to kind of um every decision you would make but having the data there and looking at it in a visual way and being able to see it summarized over different time periods uh can help you make decisions that, you know, at least in my case, helped me still to not lose money. I still doubled my investment, but uh, got out before <laughs> it crashed. I think that's kind of a one-time thing. It's not like you're an example with uh, materials fluctuating every year. <laughs> yeah, that's, it, no, that, that's a great example. And, and again, it's, it's one of those two-dimensional examples that, you know, to me is akin to the operational side, right? You want to make a decision every day, sell or buy, right? And so right. that's a very two-dimensional, uh, you know, buy low, sell high is, is the optimal uh, scenario. And you basically look at the numbers based on those two-dimensional principles, right? Um, time and up and down, right? As, as, as it goes up, as it goes down, am I going to buy or sell? And um, that's a great example of, of operational. But then you may analyze this in a, in a few years. You may go, oh my goodness, maybe I should have stayed in because now it's at tenfold <laughs> what I purchased that, right? And yeah. uh, so that, that that's a great um, you know segue into kind of how this all comes together in terms of, um, you know, over time, you're going to get more value out of data. And that's, that's another thing that I think is important is that it's, it's very, um, you know, uh, I guess I could say instinctive of people to analyze data a little too quickly, um, jump to decisions based on uh, minimal amounts of data. Um, another uh, kind of easily relatable um, analysis is if you watch half of any kind of sporting event, right? You see one team, you know, beating the other team and you say, oh, they're going to win. Well, there's not enough data to predict that yet. You still have to allow it to play out and you'll find out, you know, maybe at the end of the day, um, the team that you didn't anticipate winning because of the minimal amounts of data you had early, um, you know, they didn't win, right? The team that you thought was going to win didn't win because you just didn't have enough data. And so I always try to, uh, you know, remind folks in, um, in doing analysis that, you know, the more data you got, the better. It, it really comes down to that. And that's why uh, even if you're implementing machine learning and artificial intelligence, the real key to those being implemented properly are more and more data um, without having more um, uh, or enough data, uh, you're probably going to make some uh, incorrect decisions or misinterpret the data and ultimately make uh, misinformed decisions. So uh, a key component, you know, sometimes you got to let time. And I think, uh, you know, you were smart to pull the trigger. <laughs> you <laughs> saw enough enough data to make a decision and, uh, you know, responded accordingly. So uh, gr- great example. Yeah, sure. And, well, and, and dashboards really can show a lot of different things other than just the two-dimensional, um, the two-dimensional stories, right? You could be looking at your know, product distribution, maybe just at a snapshot in time, you know, it's, so it's not a, it's not a time series thing. It's just, um, you know, what, what right now is, uh, my product distribution in terms of sales and, and historically aggregated over all time, right? Or what kind of web activity am I getting over all of my different products, right? Uh, you know, at one snapshot point in time, right? So there's, there's those things that, you know, or, um, or even, you know, what, what right now is my highest, uh, uh, my highest, uh, revenue opportunity 
among all of my customers, right? Or among all of my prospects, right? And that and those are some of those more static, uh, not dynamic uh, visualizations or or uh, or stories that you would look at that that aren't necessarily changing over time um, on a on a line chart, but right are are more aggregate of everything that you have maybe at a certain point in time, um, and yeah, you know. It, it, th- those can be somewhat more sophisticated and and interesting as well <laughs> as far as the story they tell yeah you know what you you bring up a good point because a lot of the data is is such a a, a quick look and you know as human beings we really try to rationalize what we see and a lot of times that rationale may not be complete because we're only seeing a a quick glimpse of something um and so that leads me to um, a, a key component of most dashboards that I think um, should really be implemented. Um, and, and that is the ability to drill in and to dive into the details. So most of the um, uh, applications out there that uh, folks are using to do analysis allow for that capability. And I think using that helps to tell the story because what you have in most dashboards is the end result. Well, how did that story play out? You know, we we talked earlier about, you know, the dashboards being the final result and those KPIs are measurements. uh, Those key performance indicators are measurements that people have predefined earlier saying that these are important. These measurements, whether good or bad, can predict some of our decision making. And a lot of times you'll find out that those KPIs should actually be changed. And the only way you're really going to find that out is if you're able to actually look at one particular measurement and then drill into it. And you may find out that there's more information behind the covers. And now you have a whole different set of KPIs that you should be focusing on um, rather than what you started off with. So that's a great example of how you know, a lot of businesses evolve with their dashboards and uh, it's a never ending story. I mean, things always change. So if you've uh, developed some dashboards and you've got a a finished product out there and you say, okay, you know, to your business force and your workers here, look at these dashboards and make some decision. um, I think those are, are, are great starting points, but ultimately I think all dashboards Um, and data evolves. So it's very important for a company and and a business to evolve with those changes. So, you know, your dashboards are always going to be changing. And I think that's a good thing because you want to stay ahead of the curve so that you can actually see these trends and see where things are happening um, as they're happening. And if if you can, do some predictive analysis and and, uh, every once in a while, uh, you'll get lucky and, and you'll find out the trend before everybody else does. Yeah, what you're talking about there as far as you know, drilling into the dashboard and seeing some of the details really, to me, sits in this realm too of kind of how, how personalized do we allow people to make these dashboards, you know? And I think it is really important that, uh, you know, dashboards that are, are uh, given to people are able to, uh, you know, create and share reports from those dashboards, you know, monitor uh, certain findings there and, and personalize the content, you know, you, you want to give people who are using the dashboard, not just people who are building the dashboard, the ability to, you know, customize, uh, you know, what chart they're using or uh, what graph they're using in order to look at the data or uh, you know to create a new chart and graph um, off of part of the data that wasn't originally in there, or you know um, schedule a report to be delivered to to someone at a certain frequency, right? Uh, maybe it's it's their stakeholders every uh, corporate fiscal year, right? So we were talking about all the things these dashboards can be used for, um, and it's important that when they're designed, they're designed to be customizable and personalizable uh, to the person who's using them, right? Not not only for the person who's building it. Yeah, that's one of the biggest components that I think, uh, you know, just over the last five years, 
uh, businesses have started to grasp the importance of that. And this is why having uh, a collaborative environment is so important. You've got to be able to share these graphs and charts with other departments within your industry, um, with, within your company. Um, literally, uh, you know, by sharing that information, you're enriching not only just the, the data, but the decision making itself. So one of the key components of dashboards um, is the security, right? Having the right folks see the right things at the right time and, and the user interface. And so a lot of the dashboards that are out there um, started off being one dimensional, really just serving one vertical or, or one particular audience. And I think that's changed, uh, like I said, literally over the last five years, I think it's actually more important and more valuable for graphs, charts, reports, details to be shared uh, amongst uh, you know the different um, entities within your company because although a person may not be familiar with the data in a different uh, you know structure of the organization, that data could be very helpful. Um, and and those are insights that I think are starting to come together as people share the end result, if you will. The, the dashboards I consider the end result, the, the, the story that, that someone's told at a summary level. And so that story, once shared to other departments or, uh, again, other, other resources within your company, now they can start to actually look at things from a different paradigm and actually put another story together and, and come up with uh, you know explanations and, and reasons why a trend is happening and uh, test things, right? That's a, it's another big component of, um, I think that doesn't get enough credibility in developing dashboards is you should have uh, an area or a sandbox, if you will, for your analysts to play in so that over time, if they have certain ideas and they see a trend, they can find out is this truly a trend or is this a one-time wonder? And I think by having that flexibility and that collaborative environment within your dashboards, um, I think that really goes a long way in allowing uh, predictive analytics and decision-making, right? That's that's really what you want to get to is better decision-making with all of this data. And so uh, sharing that by having, you know, a loose enough security to allow people to share, but yet tight enough to protect the, uh, the valuable information. I think that's very important. Definitely. Yeah, I think, you know, the, the, whole, the whole security discussion around dashboards can be really complex as well, you know. So it's, it's something I think a lot of people are still uh, getting their head around. Um, for us that build dashboards, you know, it's to me a dashboard is the same thing in a lot of ways as a as an application you're building, you know, like a web app or something. And uh, you know, so uh, we've we've been talking about <laughs> st stuff uh, security around web apps forever, right? But um, but you know, a lot of a lot of times, you know, a dashboard that is going to be exposed externally, right? People internally are going to want to be able to see that dashboard at different levels of granularity. Maybe if it's, uh, you know, an account that someone has, uh, you know, someone uh, someone in the or within the organization um, who is a salesperson is going to want to see all the accounts that they're managing. Whereas you might want to expose that exact same dashboard to the to one of the accounts, but only let them see their account. Um, perhaps because some of the performance of your company and the value add you, you've been giving that account is exposed through the dashboard, right? So, it, it, and then, uh, you know, for someone way higher up the food chain, <laughs> the CEO is going to want to be able to see all the accounts and all the regions and all the groups and everything. Um, so you have this one dashboard uh, that a lot of different people are using uh, with with a wide variety of kind of permissions that need to be implemented around it. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it can get 
complex really quick, but it's it's so essential in order to be um, in order to be able to give the right person the right dashboard. You have so many different departments using maybe the same dashboard, maybe a different dashboard, but the way that the executive suite, the C-suite uses a dashboard is going to be different from the way that sales uses a dashboard, which is going to be different from the way marketing uses a dashboard, which is different from the way someone in a call center would use a dashboard, which is different from the way that someone who's looking at your social media presence is going to be using a dashboard. Um, you know, at Tesh Global, we've worked a lot in healthcare too, and and healthcare uh, has their own kind of unique set of dashboards that they they're looking for. So uh, it all varies on the user and the industry, and uh, each each dashboard kind of needs to be created for the the context that it's going to be used in and secured for the context that it's going to be used in. Yep, there's so many uh, decisions to be made in a company, and so it's very important to allow those folks to make those decisions um, and allow them the information to do so. So it's 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 really a a key component of um, dashboard development um, to allow folks to have access to the information. Um, there was once. Uh, uh, an idea that, you know, we want people to build their own dashboards. Um, I think there's a, a you know, it, it's a double-edged sword. That can be good uh, if the folks know the data well, right? It could be a disaster if they don't know the data well. If there's relationships that are being made out there, um, what's going to happen is there's going to be stories that don't get tell, told correctly. Um, but ultimately, you know, the CEO or the leader uh, or or the, the person who's actually got the vision within a company, uh, I think by giving them access to various dashboards, what happens often is they're able to then tell a story of why they have made a decision back in the past and what that decision has led to um, at, at the current time. So these are all great things that, you know, if you're going to be designing dashboards and uh, producing um, uh, charts and graph to tell a story. Uh, it's really important in whatever vertical you're dealing with to ensure that security is in place tight enough to keep things safe, but yet loose enough to share with the people of relevance and allow them to actually give input to um, both the dashboard uh, development effort and a collaborative style of growth so that you know, these living and breathing dashboards continue to give value to a company. So um, these are these are things that happen in every vertical. So um, it's great how you, you, you know, you mentioned sales, marketing, call centers, social media, healthcare. Those are all verticals that all have the same principle of sharing information yet being secure. So I think as we talk about these dashboards, um, those are some things to keep in mind because ultimately it all leads to a decision, right? All right. this data, all of this actually ultimately winds up being fodder for a decision. It really is, you know, material to make a decision with. Um, and, you know, the other thing about it is that, you know, folks are going to make decisions um, – in a business every day. So why not try to equip them with or arm them with enough information uh, to make the best decision? And you may find out that maybe you're collecting or you're analyzing the wrong data. And even that, that's a great thing. Now, if you know what's um, uh, not giving you value or what's not producing for you, maybe it's time to look to another area and figure out what are the real new KPIs now? And all of that requires you to share data with different folks in the organization, get feedback from them, test out your theories, and then evaluate, right? Are we looking at the right thing? You know what? Yes, we are. Great. Call to action. You know what? Maybe we're not looking at the right thing. Call to action, change what we're looking at. And so this is a continual iterative process that really starts to, you know, 
bring you value when you start honing in on things that really move the needle within your company. Definitely. Well, I think that it's, you know, cl- clear from the discussion, hopefully to you, our listeners, that, you know, dashboards really bring you speed, uh, but they also bring you versatility, right? Um, or versatility. <laughs> Let me say the word <laughs> right. Right. But uh, yeah, I've talked with uh, Derek Nose, who's our Tableau practice director at Tesh Global as well. And really, uh, the the goal that, that he has is to help people view the data the way that suits them best, right? And the way that's best for them to be able to share it and, and tell that story to really promote a better understanding of uh, the business and, and the performance of the business throughout uh, the rest of the organization, right? So I think if you're listening and you or uh, your organization are kind of looking for better business intelligence um, and a better business intelligence dashboard, you know, or any kind of dashboard, right? Or if you're already um, someone who's, you know, listening in and using Tesh Global and you didn't know that we build, you know, dashboards as well, uh, we really think, you know, we have the capability as well to to build a dashboard that's going to help you understand your environment and better navigate, uh, you know, the landscape um, of your business and help you make better business decisions. And, uh, that's not to be all sales pitchy or anything, but it's just, uh, something that we're passionate about and we love to help people succeed uh, in that way. Wayne, we are running low on time. Um, but I really appreciate you, uh, joining me again this week for this fascinating conversation. Any words to wrap up before, uh, before we say goodbye to our listeners? Well, you know, on this topic, dashboards are good. Use them. <laughs> it's really that simple. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a living and breathing thing as well. So, um, you know, don't be satisfied with the dashboards that you have. Uh, I think they may bring value, but continue to evolve. Uh, continue to tweak them. Continue to actually stretch those dashboards that you have uh, to their limits. And you're going to find out that it's really going to provide you more value and allow you to actually use your data in ways that you may have never thought of before. So dashboards are awesome tools. And I'm I'm glad we had a chance to talk about this uh, in terms of uh, bringing value out of your data and and to your customer uh, via these dashboards. So great conversation. Uh, always glad to be here and and uh, talk about these details with you. So, uh, you know, again, I appreciate the time. Definitely, absolutely. If you can see more, you can do more. And so that's what we, we want you to be able to do. Uh, we appreciate you joining us again this week for this episode of The Data Swamp, and we will see you next week.